Hey everybody, I'm Matt Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a double exposure. Okay, so I'm in the studio. My clients just left. They were here for an editorial shoot. A local magazine called The View does a youth talent section in their magazine, and fortunately, I get to photograph the kids a lot of times. They write in with their talent or their activity or whatever, and they're, they're usually very unique. And so we've done some cool shoots, but this one in particular was, I was really excited about because the kid does astrophotography. So I don't know anything about that. I know it involves lenses and telescopes and you know, it's similar to what I do, but, but I know it's also a lot different. So anyway, it was really cool whenever I got the email and they showed me the samples that, of, of what this kid has done. Here's, here's a print that they brought me. So there's several different ones, but that, is pretty cool, obviously. So we'll figure out which ones we're gonna use um, after when we get on, on the computer, but I just wanted to show you a sample for right now. So there's a couple different ways you can do double exposures. Well, not more than a couple. Um, I used to be able to do them in camera when I had Nikon cameras. I have Sony now. I know Canon does in camera also. Unfortunately, Sony doesn't. So if anybody from Sony's listening to this, guys, it would be awesome if you could put those in a firmware update for the A7R5 and the A1, um, or just start putting them in your new, in, putting that in your newer cameras. I would love the option to be able to do it in camera again. However, there is something to be said with being able to do it in post because honestly, it's the same thing. So it gives you a little bit more creative freedom when you do it that way. Although there is a lot of skill involved in camera, it's nice to have the file ready to go like that. But you know. We can't do that obviously, so we're gonna do it in post, but that's okay. So you need to think about how you're gonna create the image. And basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a base image and then an overlay image. And the way they're gonna interact is, and there's different ways you can set them to interact. Like you make, I think, lighten, darken, additive, and I'm not gonna get into all that because I'm sure they're probably a little bit different on, on the different camera brands, but basically, the overlay image is gonna show up in the base image where it's darker. So anything black, it's gonna show up completely. And then as it fades to get brighter, then it's gonna show up less. So the way that I like to do it is either shoot on a white background if I'm doing a portrait or a black background. So today we're doing black, obviously, because astrophotographer takes pictures of the stars and planets. So that makes sense because space is black. So that's why we're gonna use an x Pro with a black background. We've got one FJ400 with the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, silver interior, with the diffusion, and then I've got my Sony A7R5 70 to 200 lens. We're gonna take this about waist up. So I wanna light it dramatically, and I'll flip this around so you guys can see the set here. Nothing, nothing complicated, like I said, just one light. And the stool is where he was, and then, so we've got a, a few feet off the backdrop, and then the light was either on the right or the left, and very directional, and I did that on purpose because I wanted the second half of his body, so camera left in this case, if he was sitting there, to go into shadow so that the stars will show up on top of him. Because if you light him flat from the front, then it's gonna show up a lot less. It would just show up around him, which would be fine, but I don't think it would look quite as good. So that's why I have the light directly to the side like this. And I moved it a little bit up, but I pretty much kept it about that same direction on, on either side whenever I moved it around. And I had him look at me some, and, and I'll show you the different images once we get on the computer. But I wanna show you first, an example of white, just so you can see it. This is a picture that I took back when I did have Nikon, right before I switched, actually. I think this was the Z7 II. And I took this of my son during COVID in the kitchen. We just put up a, just a white backdrop and I lit it to make it completely white. And I, I took it with the, with the light camera right, just like I have it lit here. And he was turned towards it for a profile. And I, same principle, I wanted shadow on the left side of the frame on his body because I knew that the, the Legos were gonna show up in the shadows. So then I took a picture from above of one of his Star Wars Lego sets because he used to be really into those. And it turned out pretty cool because it looks like a helmet, kind of like a Darth Vader helmet maybe. But anyway, so that's, the, I, I love the white, but for this purpose, I think that the, I think the black definitely made more sense. So that's pretty much it. Um, we'll go over the different pictures and then I'll, I'll actually put the file together, show you how to do it once we hop on there. And it's a lot easier than, th than you think. It's just using blending modes pretty much, but it turns out exactly like it does in camera. So, and like I said, you have a lot more freedom that way. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how it's done. So before we jump over to the computer, I did want to mention his Instagram handle. It's at Astro Shooting, A-S-T-R-O-S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G. Be sure and check him out. He's got some awesome stuff. All right, so when I did the shoot, as you could see from the behind the scenes, I think you could see anyway, uh, I tethered to capture one so I could see what I was getting, so the magazine editor could see, and so the client could see. 
I don't always tether, but if I'm in the studio doing something like, like that editorial shoot or like this editorial shoot, then it makes sense too, or if I'm doing headshots, something like that, just because they get excited when they see what I'm doing and they can see that they're performing, I'm performing. So whenever I can, you know, it doesn't make sense all the time for seniors or sports teams to tether on location, but when I'm able, I do like to do it. So, but let's jump over to capture one and you can see what I got here. And I've already got these separated. So this was the first one, just kind of had him looking off to the side and you can see camera left, his right side of his body is completely in shadow, which is what we want. And then I wanted, I wanted to shoot horizontal because it could potentially be a two page spread. If I needed to add more black at the top for, if it would need to be the cover, I could do that. I could have shot a little bit more wide probably, but they didn't, they didn't tell me it was gonna be the cover. So, but you need to keep that in mind when you're doing stuff like this, if it's gonna be for a print publication like that. Okay, so that's the first one I wanted to get, just looking off to the side, had him turn to me. Again, you know, that's a very dramatic shot. You know, I normally wouldn't shoot that dramatic, most likely. If I did, I would shoot another one that had the shadows filled in, so it was a little bit lighter. But for these purposes, that's exactly what I was looking for. And then we did a couple different poses, standing up, and took some of the telescope by itself. Then we had him kneel down and look up with a different, with a different telescope. So we had a little bit of variety there. And that's pretty much it. So my favorite was the first one. So let's go ahead and edit that in Photoshop. So I control clicked on it and then just hit edit in Photoshop. And we're using Photoshop beta here. All right, so I've already got one laid out as you just saw that I'm, I've got a few different pictures that they sent me. I went ahead and moved them around and picked the blending modes I wanted and got them ready to go just so I could show you quickly the, a few different options. Okay, so here's our base image. So what we're gonna do is you can open the file or you can place it. So let's go to File, Place Embedded. And then I'm gonna go to, so here's the files they sent me. And these are all just absolutely amazing. So I like the black and white ones. I mean, it's really kind of hard to pick. Now, so thinking about how this is gonna lay out based on the picture that I took of him, I think the lighter areas are not gonna show up on his skin, which you don't want. So you don't you would want those on, but he's he would probably be better in the middle, but you need to think about the fact that these are gonna the, the bright areas of these photos, the overlay image, are gonna show up in the dark areas of his image. So Based on where he's at, this one probably right off the bat is the one that I think is gonna work the best. This one probably won't just because it's centered and he is kind of in the center. You can put him off to the side, but just because of the way it's tilted, I don't know if that was gonna work. You can try all of them, but just eyeballing it. This one's really cool too. It is off to the side, but we could probably make that work. So I'm gonna place this one just because that's the first one. That was my favorite, honestly. Um, and I think it's gonna work the best just because of the way it's composed, all right? So it's gonna place it here, it's got a bounding box, and you can see it's only 45%, which is good. We've got that little chain uh, checked there, so it's gonna stay proportional, so I'm gonna hold Option, so, and, then, and then grab the corner and make it bigger. So when you hold Option, it's gonna, it's gonna transform it from that anchor point in the middle, or wherever you put that anchor point, you can move it to. So if you move it over here and hold Option, it's gonna make it bigger from that area, but we're gonna keep it in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. All right, so now it's not totally black in the black areas I can tell that, so when you use these blending modes, there's, there's a bunch of blending modes in Photoshop. So if you go up here and you click on them in the layers palette, then this is the section that we want right here. So the ones that are gonna make it lighter. So we've got lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, add, and lighten color, okay? Lighten color and lighten are gonna be very similar. And then screen's gonna be somewhat similar, but not exactly the same. Color dodge isn't gonna work. And that's the, the linear dodge is gonna make it a little bit brighter in the highlights. You can see it's it's blowing out his skin there. So we're not gonna want that one. We're, we're gonna go with lightener screen. And it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a toss up between those two. We're gonna have to see which one we like better. So, but first, before I do that, you need to understand that these this little section of blending modes, the, the way they're gonna work is, the way they're gonna interact with the layers below them is that anything black is gonna go completely transparent and anything that's almost black will be a little bit transparent and then on up to the bright areas. Those are gonna be all the way transparent. So the bl black's gonna vanish. 
That's why I do a lot of my cutouts on black because when you set, you can cut somebody out and then, and then have a second layer below them and then set that to screen, you're gonna get some details with hair on the edges. I've got another video about that that will link up here and in the description below if you want to check that out based on cutouts using screen to your advantage. So check that out if you want to, if you're interested in those, if you do sports pictures or, you know, banners, that kind of thing. Okay. So before we do that, let's leave it on normal. What I want to do is see where the black point is currently, and then maybe add a little bit of contrast. Now I don't want to lose the stars in this because this is his photo. I'm sure he edited it the way he wanted it to, to be edited. But for this purpose, the darker areas are going to be better if there, if there is actually a black point. So I'm going to actually, it's already a smart object because we placed it. So I'm going to go to filter camera raw filter. So I'm going to go to the blacks and I'm going to hold option and then click and then mouse to the left until I see my blacks pop up. So now we've got some blacks. That's going to be hundred percent black where that's turning up pink right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white, set the white point, hold option, and then go to the right. So now you can see the stars are starting to light up a little bit with some color, right? So that automatically adds some contrast to it. And then I'm probably not going to add any detail with the sharpening. I don't typically sharpen a whole lot in, in Photoshop. Uh, we could go to effects potentially and maybe add a little bit of clarity and see what that looks like. That's going to make any, any of the stars that we lost that were faint, that might bring them back a little bit if we add some clarity. So I don't want to go overboard, but let's go to about 10. Now, if you press, press backslash, there's before and there's after. So you see it's a little bit more contrasty now, and I'm going to hit OK. So now we can go back, since it's a smart object, we can turn it on and off if we want to, but we're gonna, we're gonna leave it on. I think that looks good. And then plus we need a black point because it's gonna, that's gonna make the image look overall better because that black is gonna disappear. So now when we go to screen or lighten, it's gonna be a little bit more saturated, a little bit more contrasty without going too far. So that there's more, there's more detail in the screen. I kind of like, I don't know, I gotta say, I kind of like lighten, honestly. That's pretty cool. So now what we can do is press V for the move tool and then move him, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to move that. I meant to move the layer of him. So I'm gonna press Command J and duplicate that background layer and then move it a little bit to the left to kind of blend him in with whatever is going on over here. That's, I don't know what that is, but it looks awesome. And then you can play around with this too. We could, we could make this, maybe put this ball on top of, <laughs> I guess a galaxy or whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna press Command T and then control click and then do flip horizontal. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to flip vertical actually right there. Now, so now if I move him, maybe line that up with that, like right there. And then maybe I can crop the image. So I'm gonna press C for my crop tool and then just come up. I don't have delete. I do have delete crop pixels. So make sure that's unchecked if you don't want it, if you don't want to delete what you got, what you're gonna crop out there. I'm gonna hit enter. And we're cutting off his head a little bit, but I'm not really worried about that honestly, because this is this is a this is a very creative picture here. So I'm not too worried about it. So now it kind of looks like it's almost like that shooting out of his telescope, which is it's not obviously, but kind of adds a, an interesting element to it. And then I love how this is kind of morphs into him. So it's like he's becoming, you know, what he's taking a picture of. It's, that's very um, kind of out there, but you know, that's kind of things I think about whenever I'm composing something like this, because you want to be creative with it. You want to have fun. So I think that looks great. That's all you have to do. All right. So contrasting with that, if you set a layer to multiply, so with screen, so that if you go up here to the blending modes, this section makes things lighter. This section makes things darker, right? So if you have something that's white and you set it to multiply, then the white is going to disappear. So we're not going to talk about blending modes more than that just because this, this video is based on double exposures, obviously, but, that, but that's good to know how they behave. And you can Google the way blending modes behave in Photoshop so you know what they all do because they are, all are a little bit different. So, but anyway, I think that's pretty cool. I was excited to do this and it turned out, I mean, as cool as I thought it would, honestly. So I'm going to go over to this document that I've already had open here just to show you what I was working on before. So you can see, so I had a few different pictures. So there's one of the black and whites, and I think I set these all to lighten. Let's see, screen, that one's screen, okay. So I'm gonna set that to light so you can see the difference, see? But that one, just because of the, of the white going on, I thought that that was more appropriate for screen because it showed up more. Then we've got this other one. Now that one didn't line up great because it's in the middle. And if you, it was a two page spread, then it would be kind of in, like in the middle where the page has been. But 
in the middle of the magazine. But I, I mean, they could maybe offset that a little bit, put text on one side, I don't know. But that that still looks really awesome. Now, if I was gonna crop this for him, I might crop the side out possibly because there's not as much going on over here. So if we did that, you know, we could crop it like this. Yeah, so that's that's there's not as much negative space. That's a little bit more interesting. Um, and then and then there's the one. Is that the one we did? That is the one we did. Yeah. Yeah. So those were those were my three favorites of the ones they sent me. But that that's my overall favorite just because it fits perfectly with the photo that we took of him. So and I probably had that subjectively in my mind whenever I was taking the picture because I had seen that photo beforehand. So I'm sure that's probably why it turned out that way. But I think I think they're going to love this and it's going to work out great for the magazine. So really cool to do something different. And th this is fun to play around with. You can he's not a senior. He's a junior. But I mean, if if I'm lucky enough to do his senior pictures, we'll definitely do more of these for sure. So and you can incorporate this with athletes or, or anybody that has anything that they any kind of activity or something that, that is special to them that you could use as a double exposure. There's lots of different ways to do it and blend the images. So it's really, it's really fun to do in camera or in post, either one. So that does it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe that helps to support me on this channel and make sure you hit the bell. There's going to be a lot more content to come. We'll see you again next time.